Hi, it's me again. This is 6 or 7 and in this video I will introduce the topic of video game password systems and give an analysis of that use in Ice Age for Nintendo's Game Boy Advance. When 20th Century Fox released Blue Sky Studios Ice Age in 2002, Ubisoft released a Game Boy Advance game to go along with it, developed by Artificial Mind and Movement. The game got poor review scores and does not seem to be liked by many. I, however, have a soft spot for the game. I completed the game when I got it as a kid, have done speedruns of it and even arranged piano covers. In fact, long before results of those things got onto YouTube, I tried beating the left as quickly as possible on my GBA and for music in school I once made some very primitive Ice Age arrangements for piano and drums. There is however one more thing besides regularly playing the game that I did to Ice Age as a kid. I tried to crack the password structure. If you haven't played many video games from the time, you might not know, but around the beginning of the 90s most video games had become too long to beat in one sitting. By putting a battery in the cartridge, the game could save the player's progress. However, battery saves were fairly expensive. In the Game Boy Advance time, different types of flash memory also became available, but these also were expensive back then. So most developers opted for a password system instead. Such a system regularly presents a password to the player that they can note down somewhere to use the next time they boot the game. This way they can continue playing without the game cartridge actually saving any progress. There are a lot of things to keep in mind when designing such a password system and I wrote an article about this last year for which you can find the link in the description. In this video I will provide an example of how a password system actually works in a video game. Let's have a look at Ice Age. This is the level select of the game. It has 10 levels in total. If this was all there was to it, it would have been very simple to handle the password system. 9 preset passwords would have been enough, one awarded after every level except for the final level. However, the game has an extra challenge to offer. The levels feature acorns as health and these double as a score. If a level is beaten with 40 acorns or more, the player gets a golden acorn on the level select for that level. If a golden acorn is obtained for all 10 levels, the player is rewarded with a bonus level. The golden acorns greatly complicate matters. While the levels must be beaten in order, the golden acorns do not have to be collected in any set order. Taken into account that you can only have golden acorns on the level you've beaten, there is now still a need for over 1500 different passwords. It would take way too much time to set these by hand, and moreover it would take up too much space on the cartridge. So the developers had to somehow automatically generate passwords, in a way so that they could also be decoded. For example, if you have beaten levels 1 through 4 and have a golden acorn just on level 2, this should give you a unique password that when you enter it next time you will have unlocked everything up to level 5 and have a golden acorn on level 2. The programmer who designed this game's password system went for a pretty simple solution. Let's see if you spot the regularity in the passwords that you get on a regular first playthrough. I would be rather surprised if you did not spot the regularity. It seems pretty clear that QBB means no golden acorns. And this is what initially piqued my interest into the workings of the system and also what I started with when I set off recently to really dissect it. I will not try to guide you through my thought process, as for most viewers it would either go too fast or too slow. Rather, let me explain the results. Let's first look at the symbols that the password system uses. Each password consists of 6 characters and the available symbols are all letters from the English alphabet. More specifically, they are the first 17 consonants. I believe that the developer decided to exclude vowels because including them can lead to unfortunate coincidental word forming and could give rise to obscene passwords. I have an example to give you from another game, but I would rather keep this video family friendly. Read the aforementioned article if you are curious. But why just the first 17 consonants? Well, actually, only the first 16 consonants are really used. The letter V was presumably only included to balance out the roster. If the number 16 does not ring a bell, I will try to catch you up to speed. Computers store data as bits. A bit can have one of two values, 0 or 1. These can also be viewed as OFF and ON. 8 bits constitute 1 byte, a term which will probably be familiar to you. A unit less common but very relevant here is the nibble. A nibble consists of 4 bits, so half a byte. This means that it has 16 possible values. 
16 possible values, 16 possible letters, there we are. Every letter in the password system represents a nibble, which consists of 4 bits. The rightmost three nibbles are quite simple. Each bit here stores whether a golden acorn was obtained on a certain level or not. But there are only 10 levels and 12 bits. What about the remaining two bits? Well, it turns out that the first two bits are always one. They don't store anything. That's why if you haven't earned any golden acorns, the passwords end in QBB and not BBB. The other bits correspond to the levels 1 to 10 from right to left. So if you've got an acorn on level 4, this bit will be 1. If you've got no golden acorns on any other levels, this results in a password ending in QBL. It's simple enough, isn't it? If you have acorns on levels 2, 3, 4, 6, 8 and 9, the password will end in R, N and S. If you've got all golden acorns, the password will end in D, D, D. The leftmost three nibbles are more complicated, however. The second and third nibbles store up until what level the player has got. This could actually have been stored in a single nibble, as the amount of possible values of one nibble is 16, and there are only 10 levels. However, presumably to make encoding and decoding easier, the reach level is actually stored in a way similar to how the golden acorns are stored, by saving for each individual level whether it has been beaten or not. But hey, that's not possible. There are 10 levels and just 8 bits in 2 nibbles. But here the developer did something clever. It is actually not necessary to store whether the player has beaten level 10, as beating it does not unlock anything, because it is the last level. Furthermore, it actually isn't necessary to store whether the player has beaten level 1, as the player only receives a password after beating a level, so they must have beaten level 1. Thus, these two nibbles store whether each of the levels 2 to 9 have been beaten. There's something quite interesting that I should point out here. It is of course impossible to have beaten a level that comes after a level you have not beaten. Thus it is not possible, for example, to have the second and third letter be C and K, because this would mean having beaten level 6, but not level 5. The game actually checks for this impossibility. If in these two nibbles a 1 is encountered to the left of a 0, the password is just rejected. However, there is another impossibility that is not checked for. To get the golden acorn on a level, you must beat it with at least 40 acorns. So it cannot be that you have a golden acorn on a level without actually beating it. Yet the game allows for it. JBFQBL, for example, is a password that will be accepted and it means that you have not yet beaten level 4 but do have a golden acorn on it. Thus, there are passwords that are accepted but can never be obtained through gameplay. Then we have one final nibble to look at, the leftmost one. But there's nothing left to store, is there? We know up to what level the player has got, and we know on which levels they've got golden acorns. Well, let's suppose that this nibble wouldn't exist. Then imagine a player has unlocked all levels and got the golden acorn just in level 1. That would make the password TTQBC. But as it happens, before pressing A to enter the last character when entering a password on the next playthrough, the player accidentally presses down instead of right on the d-pad and picks a symbol J instead of C. Just a little mistake. The password is accepted and all of a sudden levels 2 and 3 have golden acorns instead of level 1. This is of course undesirable. If a player makes a mistake while entering a password, the password should be rejected. Pressing the wrong button should not result in another valid password. And that is what the first nibble is for. This is what is called a checksum. A checksum is a simple algorithm, usually involving summation, used to check the integrity of a piece of data. The checksum in Ice Age works as follows. First, all nibbles are summed up, discarding overflow. That is to say, if you add 0001 to 1111, you get 0000. Then subtract 1 from the result. This is the checksum. Of course, this calculation is done in binary, and if you are only used to doing arithmetic in decimal, this might cost some time to wrap your head around. I will admit that I use a calculator to save time. Now, if a player accidentally picks the symbol J instead of C, the password will not be accepted. One of the nibbles is 5 symbols up from what it should be, so the checksum also should be 5 symbols up. Because the checksum doesn't match, the password is rejected. 
Now, this type of checksum, like many other simple checksum algorithms, does have one disadvantage. It disregards the position of nibbles. So if the player would inadvertently enter CB instead of BC, the password would be accepted because swapping nibbles around does not change the sum. I do think that this type of error is less likely to occur than simply entering one wrong symbol. Using a checksum does have another advantage besides catching many input mistakes. It greatly reduces the chance that the player will find the working password by randomly entering symbols. Of course it is fun when you're randomly hitting buttons and accidentally enter a working password, but it's clearly not intended. The extra nibble reduces the chance of stumbling upon one by a factor of 16, or actually 17 if you include the unused symbol V. I would like to know how likely is it that the randomly entered password will be a working one? Well, there are 70 symbols and 6 characters, so the total amount of potential passwords that can be entered is 17 to the power of 6, which is a bit over 24 million. How many of these actually work? Well, for the last 3 nibbles, the first 2 bits are always on and the others can freely be either on or off, so this yields 2 to the power of 10 combinations. The first 3 nibbles are much more restricted however. The game checks whether you didn't beat any levels out of order. As such, there are only 9 possible valid combinations for the bits that store what levels have been beaten. Finally, the checksum nibble depends completely on the other nibbles, so it cannot freely vary. Thus there are 2 to the power of 10 times 9 accepted passwords, which is only a little over 9000. This makes the chance of accidentally inputting a working password extremely low. If you randomly enter a password 2000 times, you have a chance of slightly more than 50% that there's a working one in there. The amount of passwords that can be encountered during gameplay is a little bit lower yet, at 1534. So if you do happen upon a working password, it is likely that it is a nonsensical one. Maybe you should just stick to playing the game normally. Although investigating matters such as these is at times even more fun than playing the games as they were mentally played, in my opinion. But I think that's enough arithmetic for now. I hope that you understand how the ISIS password system works now, and even more so that you found it interesting. In case you have the game and would like to generate some passwords, but don't feel comfortable with the binary arithmetic, I made a web application that encodes the password for you. Go to 607web.nl slash ice-h-passwords to try it out. Thank you for watching and God bless.